It's been more than 25 years since our guest tonight first held his paintbrush against a canvas, since his first ever piece of art. More than two decades later, Botswana is experiencing one of the most talented artists to ever walk our soils, Wilson Ngoni. Some have dubbed him the country's very own Picasso. Others have called him the Michelangelo of Botswana. But one thing that is certain is that this internationally acclaimed artist lives and breathes art. Born in the northeastern village of Masunga on August 14, 1978, Wilson is the second born of seven children. His family planted roots in Khabane village just a few kilometers from Khaburoni before he left that nest to set up his own in his early 20s in Kopong. Sadly, in 1999, his mother passed away, leaving him with the responsibility of taking care of his siblings. Even through that hardship, he completed his Cambridge in 2001 from Wedding College, where he spent most of his time painting. Wilson's love for painting spans to as far back as the early 90s, when he experimented with different forms of art, from drawing, sculpting to painting. The saying, lest you become a struggling artist, is one that Wilson is very familiar with, having had to deal with his mother's and teacher's concerns that he was spending too much time on his art, not paying much attention to his books. However, the arts have favoured him over the years as he's now an internationally recognised artist whose work not only makes him a force to be reckoned with, but provides him a comfortable life. His work has been showcased on various international stages, such as in the United States of America, Norway, Germany, and covered by such media powerhouses as the BBC and CNN. We took a short drive outside of Khaboroni to the small village of Kupong to talk to Wilson at his home, which doubles as his primary work base. Wilson, thank you so much for coming on First Issues, affording us your time. Um, we're talking today about Wilson Ngoni. We're profiling you, Botswana's very own Picasso. So let us talk about you. If we take away your work, who is Wilson Ngoni? My name is Ngoni. That's my first name. And Wilson is my, 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 my same name, but I'm now known as Wilson Ngoni. Ngoni, I really don't know what it means. I guess my, 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 my mom or my dad or my parents or their parents had something that they wanted to say, you know. So I decided like, okay, I, since I don't know what it means, looking at what is happening right now, I decided to, to coin a meaning for my name. So my name means bread. Bread is an artistic bread that is coming to rescue, to be relief. Uh, to humanity of art starvation. I live only from painting. That's the only thing that I think I know. So that's the only thing that I do. My name is now synonymous to art. If you say art, they say Wilson Ngoni. If you say Wilson Ngoni, they say art. So that's basically me. As someone who's done so well for himself as this prolific artist as this amazing painter what would you say has been your best kept secret regarding your success no many secrets are there in my field um a lot of upcoming artists a lot of artists a lot of people audience you know from different walks of life both local and international come here to try to to discover a secret but there's none the only thing that I do is, if I don't get up from my bed where sleep is nice, the canvas is remain blank. Mm -hmm. Understand? So I have to be up and to be putting paint on the canvases. So if I say I'm an artist, if I say I'm a painter, it's a promise that I'm making to you. It's a promise that I'm making to ever cares to listen. So if I say I'm a painter and I don't produce paintings, then I'm actually not telling the truth. I'm lying. Yes. In my latest book, that is called Living with a Brush, I dedicated it to my son, Esa. And I say to him, if you are going to be a witch, make sure you hunt. You are a self-taught painter, correct? So as someone who does not or who did not have um, 
you know, a learned sense of painting of what you're doing. What has been your inspiration to do your work throughout your career? I paint each time and grow and realize oh, what, what is needed, what am I expected of, like by consumers, because also I paint for money. I paint to, 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 to get paid so that I can finance my career and I can finance my life. So money is one of the inspirations, uh, the, the driving forces. But, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to be born in this country. Botswana, it's a gem. It's now uh, Africa's best, or let me say the world, the globe's best. To be born in a country that preserves culture. You know, we've got traditional dances, we've got traditional houses, we've got traditional this and we've got traditional beauty, you've got poetry, you've got the music, you know, everything that is beautiful about our culture. Mm. Yes. Even the psychological aspect of it. It's amazing. Mm. Yes. We've got flora and fauna, this country. That has been preserved by, you know, those who came before us, you know. Mm -hmm. You go to the Okavango Delta there, you see all the wildlife, its beauty and all. You see the beautiful water lilies. If that is not inspirational enough for an artist, then that artist must be lame, you know. Let's go back a little bit um, to 2017 when you set a light over 100 pieces of your work. Take us through what sent shockwaves through a lot of your followers' minds and hearts and emotions. What was happening during that time? It wasn't my first time to incinerate my work um, or my ideas, but you know, I guess a lot of people sometimes they write something and delete, mm -hmm. delete, you know, and write something afresh. I guess a lot of people change clothes to new ones. I guess even animals, you know, they change their skin. I think the work that I bent and that was the last so far, maybe uh, it will happen again. I was like removing that skin, that psychological skin, that you know, mental skin that was like in me and I was just reducing it to, to ashes so that I could start afresh. Uh, previously, before that, you know, because I lived inside a tank and I didn't have where to put paintings, I wake up and produce hundreds of paintings each day. And, you know, because there wasn't anyone buying them or purchasing them or wishing to consume them for a lot of reasons and um, time, I would not have anyway to store those paintings. So I incinerated them also. Um, Wilson, you've been and you still are being celebrated the world over, but I want you to speak to an experience for you on the international space that you consider the most memorable. When I went to Germany in 2017, I was invited by my government to go to paint in support of the ITB uh, through Botswana tourism and you know went there yeah that you know the audience was over two million people and I had cameras around me you know I painted the Okavango Delta that place and I explained what the Okavango Delta is uh, to whoever who cared to listen. You know, these things, they change your life, change your perspective of life. The people you meet during those times while you are in action. The way at the corner of your eyes, you spy on your audience while well, they're actually being mesmerized by you in, in action. Uh, it's something that you know beyond words, but you know, we continue to live and I hope I will continue to inspire and I hope I'll continue to be inspired. And I hope to produce more works. The 
way it happened. You have achieved so much in in your career, the three decades that you've been doing this. And I want now to know what other prospects do you see that you think would aid in furthering your success? I have a vision of having the World Sinangoni Museum over the hills there, um, where I hope we we be able to nurture and mentor upcoming artists. We don't have much art scenes, art things, art spaces in my country because it's still developing. And I hope doing the Wilson Ngoni Museum, the Wilson Ngoni Art Center will be part of the development and my contribution to the development of this country and the development of Africa and the development of humanity. And then, because what I want to, 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 to achieve with all of it, I want my art to contribute to the general happiness of humanity. I want my art to be the bridge through which one person can meet the other for whatever purpose they have. So if this is going to be the bridge for an artist to meet the market, so shall it be. If this is going to be the bridge for an artist to meet another artist, if this is going to be the bridge for someone who is not an artist to visit this place and be inspired to go and start painting, I hope such wishes shall be realized.